Hello everybody, my name is Noi Levy and welcome to today's video. Today we will be ranking all of the movies that I watched in 2023. This will be a four part series as I have watched 80 movies this year and I don't think I'll have the time to talk about all 80 of them in one sitting. So today I will be ranking the 20 lower ranking movies and I will be giving commentary on them as well. Please enjoy as the ranking will begin now. It is with absolute disappointment that I announce that the last place goes to Wes Anderson's 2023 release, Asteroid City. I don't like that I don't like this movie as I admire the rest of his filmography, but I just had too many expectations when it came to this movie and I was left disappointed to say the very, very least. At this point in time, I don't think of rewatching it. Next up, we have a very surprising addition, which is a comedy special from Adam Devine. You're probably wondering how a comedy special from Bumper from Pitch Perfect is better than an existential movie, and I will tell you how. There's just more plot. That's it. The only people I recommend this next movie to are the ones who just want to waste an hour and a half approximately watching a woman whine about a mistake she made. The Earrings of Madame De is a French movie from the 50s and I don't know if it's because I watched it at midnight or any other reason, but I just didn't get it. The plot threw me off. As I said before, the main character just whines all the time and I think there was an affair there or something, but it just really really threw me off to the point where the only good thing about it were the costumes. When you're watching a movie directed by the same guy who directed The Passion of Joan of Arc, you expect there to be the same amount of suspense and just beauty that there is in The Passion of Joan of Arc, especially when this movie has come out later. Unfortunately, Vampire didn't deliver the same amount of suspense that there was in The Passion of Joan of Arc, and I actually thought that there would be even more intense moments in this movie since this is supposed to be a horror movie. This was a talking film, meaning there were like people speaking, but they weren't speaking enough. I feel like in this movie, they shouldn't have spoken at all because when they were talking, it just ruined everything. This could have been a silent movie, just like The Passion of Joan of Arc. Okay, so we are finally at our first Hunger Games movie for this series. And this time it is The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. I don't think people will be surprised to see that I have ranked this movie last in The Hunger Games trilogy or just very low in general because... I think we have all collectively agreed that this movie was just not it compared to the other Hunger Games movies. While all the other installments in the Hunger Games franchise were very fast paced and intense, this one was the complete opposite and don't get me wrong, I do love a slow burn, but this was too slow for me. Like everyone says, this should like Mockingjay should have been one part, definitely. Now on to Hidden Figures. Um, this movie wasn't my cup of tea for some reason. As much as I love dramas, I don't know why I- It's not that I didn't like it. It's just, you know what, maybe I just didn't like it. Um, <laughs> I- The performances were amazing. Um, you know, Taraji P. Henson. Janelle Monet, Octavia Spencer, they all did amazing in this movie. The story was good, but I just didn't like it for some reason. Now, this lovely, lovely movie, I can give you at least 15 reasons as to why I did not like it, and most of them are because of the many sequences they had in Neverland on that, uh, in I won't say the name, but territory. When they went to this territory and they recreated the um, dances that they were dancing, 
in this territory. I could not look at this screen. Out of shock and disgust, um, you know, while people say, oh, you know, they used to do these things in the past, people grow, it's really disgusting. Those sequences are really what pushed me to not like this movie because this movie could have been 10 times better without these sequences. Okay, now with The Dictator, this movie was a movie that I expected to be fun. You're going to hear me talking a lot about expectations for some reason. Um, but yeah, I did expect this to be funny because Sasha Baron Cohen, the same guy who plays Borat, plays the main character in this movie, which is a Middle Eastern dictator who hates Jews. So he's on a streak here. Um, the comedy was really bland in comparison to Borat, which I thought this movie would be the same style. Not in the sense that it's a mockumentary, but, you know, it's still pretty controversial. It did have a plot in comparison to Asteroid City. So I believe we have officially entered the weird comedies phase of this ranking. It did start with The Dictator, but now we are continuing with the Step Brothers movie. I, it was a memorable movie, definitely. A lot of immature comedy adult jokes um were made the scene in adam scott's car where they're all singing sweet child of mine is very very memorable i was just listening to that song today and i just thought of that scene and tried not to burst out laughing because i was in public but that movie is very memorable and very stupid Yes, I called the previous movie stupid and immediately followed up with a Steve Martin version of The Pink Panther. Now, wait a minute and let me explain myself. This is not just a Pink Panther movie with Steve Martin in it. This is a Pink Panther movie with Steve Martin in it, making doing a horrible French accent, and it also has Beyonce. Did I sell you there? Did I sell my point there? Beyonce's in it. Steve Martin does a terrible French accent. It's just a really camp movie. Road to Bali is a movie I only watched because of a song that's in the movie, which is To See You Is To Love You, sung by Bing Crosby. Aside from Bing Crosby and Bob's Bob Hope's chemistry, I didn't really like this movie, and I have a feeling it's for a few reasons. Number one, I saw it on YouTube for free off of this one channel, and the quality was terrible. Maybe it would have been better if I saw it and the quality was just good. Number two, I obviously didn't get some of the jokes there because this movie came out in like 52 or something and maybe they were referencing 50s things and I didn't get them or maybe the humor was just not my type. Up next, we have Robin Hood Men in Tights, which is a movie I'm very excited to talk to you about as it's the first Mel Brooks film in this series. The only problem I had with this movie is after watching all the other Mel Brooks films that I watched this year, all the jokes just felt the same. If I had watched this movie first while I was going through Mel Brooks filmography, I think I would have enjoyed it much more but because I was so used to his style, then I guess I just didn't like the jokes anymore. There were still some parts of the movie that I did find funny, like when Mel Brooks um, dressed up as a rabbi and gave the soldiers wine. I did find that pretty funny. Just the plot itself was really funny. I do recommend this movie. And you thought the Steve Martin talk was over. No, it's not. 
Okay, so this time I watched The Three Amigos, which stars Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Chevy Chase as these three actors who portray Cowboy in their silent movie era. A fan catches their eye. No, as a fan really wants The Three Amigos to help her um, save her village. And it's honestly a really funny movie. Um, lots of jokes. Lots of there's this musical moment where Steve Martin and Martin Short are dancing in the saloon and Chevy Chase is on the piano and it's just really, really funny. I do recommend this. This next title makes the Pink Panther appear camp adjacent in ways that I cannot even like verbally explain to you. The Pope's Exorcist is a movie that my dad recommended me and we watched it together and I went into it with like zero expectations and when I watched it I was like what the hell is this but in a variety of ways. Number one, it was really weird but not weird in the earrings of Madame de Way where it kind of threw me off but in a way that it was so unhinged and you just didn't expect what was going to happen. Um, I do... I. Like, I 100% uh, recommend you watch this movie. The only reason it's rated so, like, low, but kind of high-ish at the same time is because it's just not what you would expect from a comedy. And I just love that about this movie. We have officially entered our Doris Day slash vintage musical era of this four-part series or episode to be more specific it happened to jane was the second doris day movie i watched this year or at all and i think it was a very cute movie it wasn't amazing like other movies i've seen of hers but it it was definitely something um there weren't really any memorable moments that stood out to me to be honest but i just loved her character in this movie and I am not going to tell you to watch it or to not watch it. I'll just leave that decision up to you. On Moonlight Bay was the first Doris Day movie that I saw. And um, it's a very traditional 50s movie with 50s morals and 50s plots. Tomboy transforms into a feminine young lady and wants to be with a guy whose values or morals like ethics ideas um contradict with her father and her father doesn't really want her to be with a guy whose values in life clash with his it's a very 50s movie did someone say judy garland did someone say gene kelly well here they are in this movie called summer stock now some of you might know this movie not really from the movie itself but from the song judy performs this movie called get happy this um the song appears in a scene close really close to the end of the movie and um i'm not really going to talk about the song right now i will just talk about the movie itself if you know me very well or just very surface level know me, you know that I love musicals and I love Gene Kelly. I've always praised his dancing and I've always praised Judy Garland singing and I think they really brought that to the table in this movie. Um, Gene Kelly tap danced the night, the morning, the afternoon away in this movie and Judy Garland was just so free in this movie. It was beautiful. Definitely watch Summer Stock if you haven't. Here's a weird fun fact. I was terrified of Maleficent as a child so I couldn't watch this movie um, until this year. Not because I was terrified of Maleficent until now but because I just eventually lost interest and I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm going to watch a Disney princess movie. I honestly didn't really like this movie, though I love the song that's in the movie, the Once Upon a Dream song. Um, I don't know, some of the visuals really threw me off, and I have the same thing to say about Beauty and the Beast, um, and 
later movies like Hunchback of Notre Dame and those kind of movies. I don't like when Disney movies look like live action movies, though they are not. I like when cartoons stay cartoons. And this is what I felt when I was watching this movie. I felt like I was watching a live action movie with cartoon characters in it. Up next, we have The Blob, which was Steve McQueen's first film debut when he was still known as Steven McQueen. And the only reason I think I liked this movie so much was because it reminded me of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, another not favorite movie of mine, but very well liked movie of mine. And it also reminded me of The Twilight Zone. So there's that. Um, it was a cute movie. It wasn't scary, but it was, it's cute. It has its own theme, which I'm obsessed with. It's called Beware of the Blob. Watch it if you want. It's not a waste of time, but it's also not not a waste of time. At the very top of our ranking today, we have Century of Animation Showcase 1922. If you haven't guessed, this is basically just a compilation of a bunch of cartoons that came out in 1922. There's some from Walt Disney. There's some from um, the people who made Gertie the Dinosaur, Felix the Cat, Inkwell the Clown, like all of these wonderful cartoons that have so many distinct styles to them that I just love so much. And I guess that's all for today's video since we have reached number like one out of 20 for today. So if you want to keep on watching this series, you feel free to subscribe to my channel and we will just go along this adventure together. And please feel free to leave your opinions in the comments on all of these movies. I love discussing things. Mwah.